That looks delicious. What, the loaded breakfast yeah, wrap? Yes, it does. I didn't eat today. Uh-oh. Or yesterday. Uh-oh. You know what that means. I'm fasting until the Bills actually have a winning record. <laughs> <laughs> we fasted for a long time, bro. God, I hate this place so much. <laughs> Why do we do it to ourselves? Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. Okay, I'm gonna hit you with something that um, you haven't had a chance to prepare for. Is it an anvil? It please. is not an anvil. <laughs> Put me on. Oh please, anybody under the age of 22 doesn't know what an anvil is. They didn't get to, they didn't watch Bugs Bunny. Oh, that which reminds me, I turned on Who Framed Roger Rabbit for the kids, right? No, Thinking you that'd be a fun movie. It's very provocative. Jessica it's, Rabbit's too old for those kids. It's, I, I understand that I'm, yeah, I gotta put a little hair on their chest, all right? But that's not the point. The point is that those kids had no idea who any of those characters were. Porky Pig, no idea. Roger Rabbit, or not Roger Rabbit, but uh, Bugs Bunny, no idea. Yosemite somebody Sam, no idea. Daffy, 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 Daffy Duck, no idea. They didn't know who they were because they don't watch that kind of stuff anymore. That movie did not age well to today's generation. That's why millennials are so angry all the time. They didn't get to live their Tommy violence Jerry. through cartoons at a young age. I miss Tom and Jerry. Do you? So since the Bills are sort of in a funky position with being able to sign players and not, right? Because you got a little bit of salary cap money right now. You don't have a lot because you have to wait until March 13th to actually have salary cap money. I'm terrified what you're going to do. But here. last year, we saw the Bills sign Vontae Davis at this time, <laughs> right? Yes. So the Bills signed Vontae Davis, and we all love the move because here was this Pro Bowl corner who anybody could have signed. The Bills brought him in. Clearly, it didn't work out. But mm -hmm. that example withstanding, the timing of it is what I'm what I'm using as an example here, okay. right? So there's players who are free agents right now that are not on any team that the Bills could sign. They'd have to use this year's remaining cap money. Mm -hmm. So they got about $4 million left. That's it. That's all they got. They got about four mil. Mm, I'll take it. Right? But, well, there's a couple players I think they should look at. I already know one that you're thinking of. Okay. Who's the one that I'm thinking of? Jeremy Macklin. Jeremy Macklin's absolutely one of them that I'm thinking <laughs> of. And the reason that people were saying go get Deshaun Jackson from Tampa is the exact same reason that people could be using the go get Jeremy Macklin. Because think of Macklin as a speed guy and now look at what Allen does. Do you think Macklin would want to come to a place like Buffalo? Like, granted, he's not going to see the volume, no. but he's going to see the big. He's going to see the big plays. Well, it'll extend his career. He's not seeing the volume of it, right? But it will extend his career because he's not taking that many shots, right? Um, but would you pay a guy who missed all last year? Why not? A thirty-year-old wide receiver, you're going to give a three-year deal to who the, missed all last year because of injury? He missed all last year. I have to pay him a lot. I can make a very... You're paying Foster, like, $700. You, <laughs> <laughs> you're paying McKenzie to $250. Like, yeah. what? You, you're not paying anybody any, anything anyway in your wide receiver. McKenzie's room. paying almost as much for the Uber that he took here as he's making for a game. There's <laughs> so a couple reasons why I like the Macklin deal. Yep. Like, because of his age, number one. Because of his injury. And he missed the whole year. So, yep. what you do is you, you make a, you give him a two- or three-year deal. Maybe... Four per? You know, it's funny that you say that because my number for him is three for twelve. You do three for <laughs> you do three for ten, three for twelve. Three for twelve with a with a five three, three, four, five mil guarantee like salary. You just give me a sign. I was trying to go a half. I always try here's what here's what I always do, because we, we've seen enough contracts. It's we've so funny that we're on the same page with this. It's it's you do fifty percent of the contract. Okay, so twelve million goes to six, and then depending on how, how long you have the player or the player's value to the team, you either go a little bit more or a little bit less. Right. So, like, what was Star Latula's? 50 mil? What did he get for guaranteed? 20? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I think if you offer Macklin anything in the three-year range, he's in. I, I don't think any team's going to offer him three. I think a lot of teams offer him one. Some may offer him one in an option. Yeah. But I don't think anybody's going to offer him three. You offer him three, he's here. Now, 
he's going for two. He's here. He's here because I think well, last he's only one and an option. Yeah. Let's test how that hamstring's been. Right. Um, one so and an option. Yeah, you're right. The um, the the link, you know, the link is there with McCoy mm-hmm. and Macklin. Yep. Right. Yep. So if that relationship is good, then Macklin to Buffalo makes sense. We know Macklin talked to Buffalo before, right? It didn't yeah. work out. Yep. yep. Right. So the connection might already be there because that was this front office, right? Was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Ooh, no. Oh, no, was it? it? Wasn't. When did he talk to him? It was him? before the draft, not last year, the year before. So Macklin's available. He could sign with any team. Well, um, a team like Buffalo, I think, would be a team would be the type of team that's looking to offer him a deal. Younger quarterback, real young wide receiver group that needs to understand what to do right because when you talk about these air raid concepts that Dable put into the system uh, at the end of the season to help Allen what that's referring to is you just simplified the wide receiver routes you made them easy Mm -hmm. you took read routes out wide receivers didn't have to read coverage anymore they weren't required to do that the routes were this that was the play that was it right so that doesn't help Allen that doesn't help your wide receivers develop so you need to bring in some veteran players into that room to teach these guys when that happens. Not just teach the wide receivers, but teach Allen. Hold Allen accountable. Like, you need need somebody who's going to say, what the hell were you looking at on that play? Like, when that safety drops, I'm gone. When you see that safety come down to cover cover, cover the slant, you got to know I'm gone. Mm Mm-hmm. So I think I think you need a couple wide receivers that are gonna hold Allen accountable. It's really easy to get excited about this young wide receiver group. It is. I'm excited about the young wide receiver group, but Zay Jones isn't helping you in that department. Uh, Kelvin Benjamin clearly wasn't helping you in that department. Andre Holmes wasn't helping you in that department. There's nobody else. So Macklin makes a lot of sense. I like the idea of Macklin in Buffalo. Um, if he's willing to take on that veteran leadership role and teach these kids some stuff and hold Allen accountable for what he sees on the field because I think that's a big important piece I think Macklin's got the clout in the NFL to command respect what do you think I see you Jeremy Macklin and I raise you Deshaun Jackson I know same come from the same cloth in that respect what's the what's the problem with them both being here well the problem I think the problem resides in the fact why because we want to completely rebuild the the Eagles from well, you, you, you got you to deter me from thinking that you're, you're, you're trying to rebuild the Panthers <laughs> at this point. The reason Deshaun Jackson scares me a little bit is Deshaun Jackson still thinks that he's a volume player. And he's not. He still wants tons of volume. And that's, no, he was no, he rattling doesn't. a lot of cages. Uh-uh. Well, that, he was rattling a lot of cages no, in Tampa. I he understand wanted he office. wanted more. He wanted he wanted this, wanted that. But you just said we said it last week. The fact that he says he wants to go play for the Rams. He sees the end in sight. Yeah. He knows he's not that guy anymore. Right. Soft tissue injuries. Uh, Macklin the same same way. He had surgery. Both of those guys coming in, you wouldn't have to pay them more than ten million dollars the first year. Oh God, no. Combined. Yeah, yeah no. You no. sign you sign Jackson two for two three for fifteen, mm-hmm. Macklin three for twelve, whatever bonuses they want. You can bring those two guys in here. I know it's an extreme situation, but if McCoy can get them both here for cheap and they right. start teaching the young wide receiver core what to look at, what to right. see, hey, you're a smaller wideout. Here's some of the here's some of the shortcuts you can use in your game. Well, All right, Macklin's Macklin's a little bit bigger than that. He's bigger than yeah, Macklin, Jackson. Yeah, Macklin's bigger. So you have him teach, you know, some of the bigger wide out. You know, teach him teach Zay Macklin's Jones. Macklin's not huge, though. No, no, no. But they, what they do is they teach them. If these are the wide receivers you're planning on going forward, that's what that's what we're under the assumption. Right? These are the receivers you're going forward with. The type of offense you want. Then, all right, this is what you want to do. And Jackson and Macklin can both teach Mike or uh, Duke Williams. Because it's the jury's still out on him whether or not he could be, if he can even play, this he, or or to even be um, not a troublemaker mm-hmm. anymore. I mean, right. he had the two years in Edmonton, as we talked about before, but he's still got all these pieces. Yeah, and when you sign a guy like that to, when you sign a Macklin or a Deshaun Jackson to a three-year deal, you know it's not really a three-year deal. You're no. giving them the three years because you want to prorate out some of that bonus, bonus money. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's yeah. not. You're not really planning on him being here for three years. But you get a year or two 
to pave the way for them, you take the cap hit now to pay them, right? So you put as you much have money, to. You, you, right. I mean, you have the option. You, well, and don't forget, rollover cap is diminishing value, right? Think about it. Think, it, think about it from, from an accounting standpoint. The bills are going to, let's say the bills roll over $8 million in salary cap this year. Salary cap's going up, again, to $191 million. So that rollover cap, how much money is that cap really worth? If you're just getting new money every year. Every year the salary cap rolls, goes up, every team just magically gets new money. That money is more valuable than the rollover cap, right? Because you've been holding on to that money, you didn't spend it. Well, you're going to be getting new money every year anyway, so the rollover cap it all has diminishing value. You don't use I don't it. Think so. it. I don't think it's as valuable as the new cap you get every I year. I disagree. I disagree with that. I think this is a different episode. No. Well, no, no. I'm not, that's really quick. Okay. Rollover cap is valuable if you want to sign a guy now that you don't think you're going to get. If, if you're struggling with cap money, mm -hmm. okay, the rollover cap, the way it has been working recently, in recent years, what you gain mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the salary cap increase is what you're able to pay your working class right. with. That's, really that's true. That's, that's the wash. So that's everyone's true. been doing that. Yeah, that's so, true. So, okay, let's take care of our current roster with the rollover money. We can end up giving this guy, we could tell him, hey, we got $8 million in the rollover cap. We're going to do this. But they people have been using the uh, increase to pay for the rookie, yes. the rookie pool. That's that, absolutely true. You're absolutely right on that because it's been about the same. But getting a guy this? like Macklin mm -hmm. right now, uh, before teams have a chance to set their books, mm -hmm. I think is huge. Yeah, and you can sign him right now. And the thing is, you can sign him to that contract with the money you have right now. Yeah, you could. Mm -hmm. You cut one player outside of Charles Clay to free up a little bit more cap space. You could. You, you Bills can sign him right now. Let me just put it to that way. The Bills can sign him right now to a, a three for 12, three for 10 contract. And they could sign him right now. Yeah, he would definitely take it. The other player is a little bit outside the box, also missed last year to injury. Brandon Coleman from the Saints. Big guy, big guy, big. I'm mad at you. Why are you mad at me? I'm really mad at you. Why? <laughs> you know, the fondness I have for Brandon Coleman. I know. I, and truthfully, did not produce a lot. No, he didn't, no. He's, did been, he's, been, a lot. he's been an underperformer since he's come into the league. But there's a lot of mouths to feed in that New Orleans offense. I understand that. but It, it is feast or famine. And the ride at that park is very expensive. Yeah. you got to know your stuff to you, stick Yeah, around. if you don't know your stuff, if you don't know what Breeze knows, you're not playing. Now, he, was, he played in New Orleans for three seasons, ended up getting cut because he had a neck injury, missed the whole season. Right? Because of a neck injury. He's an unrestricted free agent. Bills could sign him right now. Again, what kind of contract are you looking at? You could probably get him on a one year, two, three million dollar deal. You could get him for peanuts right now. Because neck injuries scare teams. Scare them. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and try and tell me. Go out and look. In, in fact, hashtag nation, I encourage you to go out and try and find an injury update on Brandon Coleman because you're not going to find one. It doesn't exist. There's not one. Right? We're going to get Totally one. off the radar. <laughs> I, I hope we get one. They're resilient. I know they are. <laughs> But he's a totally off-the-radar guy who fits, again, that body of a big-body wide receiver. And he should understand complex coverages because of the offense that he came from mm -hmm. and the quarterback that he was getting passed from. Whether injury from. or any not, not picking up the offense. There's I, a think bunch different... was, I think it was injury more than it was anything else. I cross over him and Meredith sometimes. I sometimes yeah. forget who's who. Yeah, but they both that. they both check the boxes of a guy who's a no, who looks like a number one wideout. Oh yeah, on paper Brandon Coleman should be. But we talked Brandon about Coleman, Coleman should be an outstanding player. We talked about Coleman from one year to the next in, in, in New Orleans, like putting on like 15 pounds of muscle. Yeah, and then he just gets injured. Yeah, and then to to avoid like te getting tested. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's really going on with Coleman. Down That's there. fast. That's an interesting idea because if he's undrafted or if he's a free agent, he wouldn't be getting. He wouldn't be going through the drug test no. policy. No, he wouldn't. That's so interesting. I think he's taking care of his neck right now. His neck. Latimer. <laughs> Starting defense. Plays at the table. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not really sure Brandon Coleman would be a kind of guy he wanted to culture fit. I I don't. Man, Tremaine Evans put on 40 pounds this offseason. <laughs>
<laughs> He's been hanging out with Brandon Coleman all off season. It was better than hanging out with Carlos Williams. Guy's on the punt return team for three years. Now he gains 35 pounds of muscle and attitude to go with. <laughs> I think Brandon Coleman's a good sign. I like Brandon Coleman. I would sign him. What, what, what do you got to lose at this point? Exactly. Yeah. It, it's, I think that's what you have to look for. You have to look at guys who are with those elite level quarterbacks for more than two seasons where you know that in order to play, they had to know their stuff. Yeah. That's it. They have to. If you want to play with Drew Brees, you have to know how to run your routes. The fact that they don't know their stuff, does that bother you? What do you mean? They don't know. That's why they're not playing. They weren't. They weren't playing with Brees, which means they, they, they couldn't pick up the offense fast enough. What does that tell you about them yeah. coming here? But the, the, the thing that I love about Macklin and Coleman, to put a nice little bow on it, as far as from my vantage point, it's low risk, high reward. Yeah. You're not spending a lot of money. You're not investing a lot of time and resources nope. into these guys. They're ready. They're ready to go. Go ahead. Yeah. Let's, let's rock and roll. You're coming to a team that needs wide receivers. Yep. Why wouldn't that be appealing to you? And you don't have a job right now. Right. You know, you're out of work. Yep. Come. Come on. <laughs> hey, guys, you know, 